Good merry morning to you. It's a new Thursday. It's a new Schmerz day. Doesn't work. Only worked on a Sunday, didn't it? It's a new dawn. It's a new day. Got the lyrics wrong every time. As you know, I'm now uploading videos on a Thursday. I think it's going to be a good system. Thank you so much for everybody that tuned in last week and the week before. It's always nice to see you and to see your friendly comments. Today, I'm filming in a bit of like a rush, but sometimes for me, <laughs> they make the best videos because I can't allow myself to retake and retake. So you just get raw, <laughs> almost unedited Louise, which I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse, but that's what you're getting. And we're gonna be doing a juicy Q and A. I asked you about 10 minutes ago on Instagram to send in your juiciest questions. So I haven't even looked to see, well, I mean, <laughs> I'm very much hoping there is at least one or two questions on there. I will just address two things. Number one, I don't look like an egg. And if you have been following me throughout the um, utter joy that has been 2020, you will know that egg has been my middle name, Louise Egg Pentland. Um, my middle name is actually Alexandra. What is yours? Let me know in the comments. Is, any, is anyone's middle name Alexandra? There's a lot of Louise as middle names but not very often Alexandra's oh see what I mean about unedited yes I've been on a photo shoot today for fabulous magazine because my new book mum life is coming out um August 6th and that magazine fabulous magazine will be out August the 2nd so we had a full photo shoot in London I'm going to put this back up here I hope that you don't mind that it's there but oh she looks so beautiful doesn't she Yes, we did a full photo shoot. I had a makeup artist look. I feel glam AF. And also, you might have noticed that I'm talking with a full smile because Gladys is gone. Only temporarily. Um, I'm going to have to have an implant in the gap. Shudder. If you have any good implant stories, I want to hear about them. If you have horrific, terrifying dental stories from hell, please don't tell me them because I have a dentist phobia. Um, but I had a temporary, it's um, called a bridge, and it's, hang on, which one is it? Can't even tell which one it is, but I think it's that one. Yeah, that one, that's not real. Um, so I'm feeling a lot more confident now, but without further ado, I will see if we have any questions. Moment of truth, let us see, yes. Oh yes, can you see, we have got some questions. So I asked you for your most juicy questions. First one, Yasmin, and I know that I will have been asked this a thousand times. Do you want another baby? Um, I get asked this a lot, and the answer is I really, really don't know. I don't think I do, but then after I had Darcy, I said I would never have another baby, and as we well know, I have two children. So, <sighs> never say never, but it's not currently in my plan. If I felt pregnant by surprise, then I would be pleased and be like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have another baby. Um, but I don't currently yearn for another child. I do worry about my age though, because I'm 35. So I don't know how much time I have to be sort of like thinking about it. But currently, uh, no, um, no other babies on the agenda. This is a good one, Stasia says, do you find it difficult not to compare Pearl and Darcy? Yes and no is the answer to this. All these answers, by the way, are just gonna be like top of, off the top of my head. Yes, it's difficult because things like milestones, like when Pearl was learning to walk, I would be like, oh, Darcy learned to walk at X, Y, Z months. When will Pearl do it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so definitely I would compare them in that sense and also their personalities. Pearl is much more boisterous. She's much more, um, she takes risks and she's more confident. Whereas Darcy was always a much more, and still is, considerate child, risk averse, um, quite gentle in her mannerisms. But it's easy not to compare them because Pearl's only two and Darcy's nine, so they're a different kettle of fish. Like Darcy's obviously much more advanced in her personality than Pearl could possibly be at two years old. So yes and no is the answer. This is from Rish and it says, what was your first kiss like? Well, Rish, I had imagined that my first kiss would be like every 1990s to 2000 sitcom um, or romantic comedy that I had seen. And let me tell you, it was not. 
First of all, I felt immensely stressed because all my friends had kissed somebody and I had not. And it's not for want of, it's not for lack of trying, it's not because I was, you know, not doing it for a week, it's nobody wanted to kiss me nobody um so that was my first hurdle and my second hurdle was I went to an all-girls school so my pool of potential people to kiss men I didn't really know many boys so um that was a challenge now when I was in sixth form so I must have been 16 or 17 I think 16 and like well, I was 16 and a half because it was my first year of sixth form and it was October and I went to a Halloween party and there was a boy there um, called Chris and I think that he was so charming and so debonair and he came up to me with a Bacardi breezer and said, do you want to get off with me? And I was like, yeah, I do. I am ready. Let's get off with each other. Um, do people still say get off with each other? Or you would say, oh guess what I did last night, got off with Chris. <laughs> um, so I was getting off with Chris, um, it was very romantic, it was not. It was in a cricket club function room and we were sat on function chairs side by side just sort of leaning over like uh, <laughs> getting off with each other and then afterwards he got up and he was like thanks and just left and I was like wow that was not at all like how I had hoped imagined or envisaged that to be that was dire and I would like to say that kissing got better um, over the course of the years and in my adulthood it has but the first few snogs were pretty dire um, so I hope that uh, I hope that that's not such a question. Lots of details in there. I hope you enjoyed that juicy question. Alice says, "What's the one thing you would change about yourself if you could?" Oh my goodness, so many things that I would change about myself. Um, I would love to be able to calm down easier. I'm one of these people that once I'm stressed or angry or once I'm of a heightened mood, it's very hard to come down quickly. Liam can get very very cross and then within like five minutes he's like back down to zero again whereas it takes me a while to get very cross or very stressed it takes me a while to get to that heightened point but once I'm there that is really hard for me to come down from it quickly and I'll tell you it would just save time if I could like level my emotions out better so I'm gonna go for that one or and I know you shouldn't say this because we should all be body positive but I'm gonna be really honest with you I really don't like my stomach I feel really self-conscious of it like I don't mind that the rest of my body is plus size, but my stomach, where I've had children and, you know, it wasn't exactly washboard <laughs> prior to the children, um, I, I just feel like that's what makes me feel most conscious, so I would, I would have less of a jibbly jelly belly if I could. Alana Rosa, what a question. Opinions on faking the big O. I think we all know what you're talking about there. My opinions on faking it are... I think there's a time and a place when sometimes, you know, you want it. Obviously, I never do and never would, but I don't think it's the biggest crime in the world if every now and again you find yourself in a position, that's what she said, where it's time for things to come to an end and you can help it along a bit. I will leave it there because potentially, like, my family is watching this, so let's move on to the next question. In a similar vein to the last question, Heather asks, Favourite place for plus size sexy lingerie? You're so glam, I bet yours always matches. Heather. I'm sorry, but I'm going to burst your bubble here. Um, I really appreciate that you think that I'm so glam in the lingerie department. I'm not. Um, <laughs> lucky Liam. I don't know where the best place to buy sexy lingerie is because I really, really don't. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. Scurry. Sorry. Chew. <coughs> Oh, it wasn't a wetty. <laughs> bless me. Um, how many of you said bless me just then when I did that? Um, I have some like stretchy, lacy French knicker type short things from Debenhams. Um, and that is, I think ASOS does some nice ones, but look, I have worn those like lacy body things before and I just feel very subcon subconscious, self-conscious in them and very like <laughs> awkward. Um, so I think maybe my days of sexy lingerie have passed or maybe they'll come back to it. when they do I'll let you know but I'm afraid I don't have 
a lot of help for you there. But there are great places for sex lingerie. My friend Elena Lucy, if you follow her on Instagram, she has some lovely bras and she's always linking to nice things, um, plus size things. So hopefully she'll be able to help you better than I can. Uh, you're welcome, Elena. I've just sent lots of questions over to you. Katie asks, should women feel the pressure that they do to be hairless? Um, no, I don't think so. Oh, sorry, that light's flickering. Is that going on for you on the camera as well? Sorry if it is. No, I don't think so. I think if you want to have body hair, have body hair. Um, everyone has different styles and it's all about your comfort levels. I hate the idea that actually someone would feel really pressured. But now I'm starting to think, do I shave because I feel pressured? Like, I shave my legs, I shave my underarms, I keep everything else tidy. And I'm thinking, oh, do I do that for me? Or is it a societal pressure? That would be an interesting one in the comments. But I've shaved my legs for as long as I can remember because I like the feel of it and I like the look of it. Um, and the same with my underarms. But I have seen women with unshaved underarms and there isn't a part of me that's gone like, ugh! I just thought, oh, that's unusual. You don't see that very often. That light flickering. Why are you flickering? Are you a ghost? Or is it the fuse board? Flicker if you're a ghost. I'm comforted that it didn't flicker. We all remember the ghosts that lived in my old house. If anybody remembers the name of the ghosts that lived in my old house and can leave it in the comments, you get 99 glitter points. And you know I only give, give nine glitter points. You guys have asked some juicy questions on here. There's... There's some things here that I'm like, God, I can't say that online. Like some of you said, what don't you like about Liam? We know he's such a good egg, but dot, dot, dot. Um, there's lots of little things I don't like about Liam, and I'm sure there's lots of little things that he doesn't like about me, but I would be really upset if he sat and publicly said anything negative about me. So rest assured, even though I rave about how great he is and what a good egg he is, of course there are things that wind me up about him, and of course we have... Uh, we bicker and we have our arguments and all that sort of stuff, but I don't think I'm ever going to be the sort of person that, like, even in a mocking way, um, that, like, publicly slates him at all. But please know that even though I talk about what a good egg he is, there are times when I think, oh, you are a not a good egg today, um, but I'm pretty sure that he thinks the same about me as well. Grossest pregnancy symptom, and this is from Anwen. Is there a cat at the door? Just let the cat in. Grossest pregnancy symptom. I'll just let the cat in and then I'll give you two words. Look who's come to join us. Ish, the little boy. It's all bit. Okay. Grossest pregnancy symptom. It's not really a symptom of pregnancy, it's just a thing that happens to a lot of women when they're about to have a baby. Enjoy Google searching. Mucal plug. Next question. Kira asks, how do you feel about other YouTubers getting cancelled? She's put cancelled. So you might have heard of cancel culture. Um, it's something that's been going on a while, but I didn't see it going on because I perhaps just wasn't looking in the right places like Twitter and like on the depths of YouTube. But basically, and feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, because I'd be interested in a discussion on this. It seems to be where um, a YouTuber or vlogger does something wrong, like maybe um, gets embroiled in a situation that is morally or ethically dubious, or maybe they've said something bad, or um, there seems to be varying scales for it, but basically people will will not like it and, and say that they don't like it, and then they'll be like, that person's cancelled, um, and then everyone will jump on, like, they're cancelled, they're cancelled, and then like it goes too far for them to be able to fix it. It seems like, I mean, please tell me if I'm wrong on this, but because I, I hope I am wrong. And in some cases, well, you know, I, I'm scared to say it because I, should, I don't want to be cancelled. Um, I, I don't really agree with cancel culture. I agree with like kind culture. And I think it's okay to say to somebody, hey, that thing that you did or that thing that you said, um, I don't really agree with it and the reason for it is X, Y, Z and what I think would have been a better way to go about it is this, that and the other to allow that person an opportunity to assess what's happened um, and hopefully um, if they have done something wrong to apologise and try and make amends where they can um, and then move on a better person from it. You know, like, I suppose I look at everything in like a mumsy point of view but if Darcy did something really horrible to her sister, if they were like having a fight and she did something horrible. I would say to Darcy like, that was really wrong, that really upset or hurt your sister. 
you need to love your sister because such and such let's make it up and I would want them to make up and they're like right we're going to move on now as a loving family I wouldn't say Darcy you and your sister your relationship is cancelled that's it you can't have it anymore that's so bad it's cancelled so I don't agree with cancel culture I do agree that there have been some really terrible things that have happened um perhaps I'm a bit soft and I just think that everybody deserves the opportunity to um you know apologize and be forgiven and make amends and then move forward positively but what do you guys think I don't want you to call anybody out so I don't I, if you want to talk about this I don't want to use specific people as examples because I don't want this channel to be a place of you know bad mouthing people but be interested to know what you think Jenna asks do you pay the children a wage for adverts that they feature in? No hate, just the question. That's such a good question and I, th and I don't take any hate from it and I think that I would be thinking the same thing if I were um, a viewer watching, um, you know, the whole phenomenon of like family creators. The short answer is no, I don't pay them a wage but what I do do is I have savings for them. Nice side step on the doo doo, name that sitcom. Um, and I have savings in lots of different ways for them. So the investments that I make, you know, I have like a bit of a property side hustle. Um, it, those things are labelled as going to them. Um, and so I've worked hard to have those put by uh, that I don't touch or dip in and out of. So that, that's a very loud bird. Um, so that when they're older that they have those ready for them and I also put money into their savings account. Right, I will do one more because um, I'm running out of time. Oh, I think this is like an assumption. Um, it says, you dislike the OG 2014 YouTubers, Zoe, Marcus, Tanya, etc. That is not true, I'm afraid. <laughs> I wish that I could tell you something juicy because I often get questions like, what's the beef between the British Brit crew Brit crew. Um, I've addressed it before on here, there really isn't any beef and I'm not saying that so that you will be like, like, like I'm trying to cover up the actual real beef. Um, if there is beef, I don't know what it is, but I just don't think there is any. And we're all just really different people and at the beginning we all started as YouTubers. So everybody was making YouTube videos and that was our like primary thing. It was a little bit different for me because I had Darcy who was a baby. And also me, Zoe and I think Tanya as well had written blogs. Did Tanya have a blog? I'm sure she did, she probably did. Um, so we just had our blogs and our YouTube channel and I had my baby and that was our primary goal So we had so much more time to spend together and also all the things we were doing were YouTube related So we would often be at the same events at the same time But now everyone's gone off and done all their different things. Zoe's had all of her ventures Tanya does all of her things. Marcus is into fashion I'm into motherhood and we've all kind of gone like whoo, completely separate ways um, in our passions and our interests and our professions that you know it makes sense we don't live in the same town I don't live in I, I think some of them well Zoe and Alfie they live together do any of the others live in Brighton or near Brighton I don't know but I don't live in London or Brighton which seems to be where everyone lives so I don't see everyone as often but I'll end it on this good note and I hope it's positive for you there really isn't any animosity um it's just that like if you have a school friend, 10 years later when you leave school, you don't see them very often or an old colleague from 10 years ago, that sort of thing. But you think of them fondly and wish them well, which is how I definitely feel to all of them. And I'm sure they feel the same way to me. I think better feel the same way <laughs> towards me. That is a load of juicy questions. Uh, I hope that I haven't caused any major um, absolute shit storms with any of my answers. Ah. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to link my book. See you all soon. Bye!